We are at Alfred's Alley. This is the oldest street in America. How cool is that? Welcome back to another episode of Burko TV. I am your host, Burko. This is the last video of the year, and I want to wish you and your loved ones happy holidays. To, 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 to today, we're going to talk about one of the most underrated cities in America. The city of fraternal love. Philadelphia! Let's roll. Philadelphia Magic Gardens And we are at the Philadelphia Magic Gardens and it's a place in the middle of the city. It's a crazy labyrinth with mosaics and random art and it's a pretty cool place. Check it out. Philadelphia Magic Gardens is an immersive mixed media environment that is completely covered with mosaics. The creator, Isaiah Zager, used handmade tiles, bottles, bicycle wheels, mirrors, and international folk art to chronicle his life and influences. The space is made up of two indoor galleries and a two-level outdoor sculpture garden. As a non-profit museum, Philadelphia Magic Gardens celebrate art in its many forms through community outreach, public programs, hands-on activities, exhibitions, and tours. Zager has devoted himself to beautifying the South Street neighborhood since the 1960s. Works from India, Peru, Ecuador, Morocco, Indonesia, and Guatemala can all be found in this space. His creation was titled then Philadelphia Magic Gardens and quickly became incorporated as a nonprofit organization. In 2008, Philadelphia Magic Gardens opened to the public. The exhibit right now is called Hecho en Mexico, which means made in Mexico. This was my lucky day. It just happened to be Mexican folk art exhibit. Folk art is handmade work that reflects the stories, people, cultures, and traditions of a particular region. The artist's skills are passed down through generations. Did you know that calacas, calaveras, and alebrijes appear frequently in Mexican folk art and are especially popular during the holiday Day of the Dead? The holiday celebrates friends and relatives who have passed on. Rocky Steps. We are here at Philadelphia's Museum of Art where you can find the famous Rocky Steps and Rocky Statues. So yeah, another cool place to visit here in Philadelphia. The Rocky Statue 
and the Rocky Steps are undeniably two of the most popular attractions in Philadelphia. A near constant flow of people arrive daily at the bottom of the stairs at the Philadelphia Museum of Art to snap a picture with the Rocky statue. The fictional Rocky Balboa of Sylvester Stallone's Rocky movies was immortalized in bronze by the artist A. Thomas Schomburg in 1980 for a scene in the film Rocky III. After the film was complete, Stallone donated the statue to the city of Philadelphia. Since 2006, the statue has been located at the bottom of the stairs at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where visitors then often hustle up the museum's grand stairway to try their hand at their famous two arms raised salute. all while soaking up picture-perfect views of the Philadelphia skyline. Rodan Museum Philadelphia philanthropist and movie theater business owner Jules Maspom began collecting works by Auguste Rodin in 1924 with the intention of founding a museum devoted to the artist considered the father of modern sculpture. Maspom set about acquiring pieces in bronze, marble, and plaster that represented the greatest collection of Rodin's sculptures outside of Paris and commissioned the neoclassical architect Paul Cret and the landscape designer Jacques Grebe to create a museum and garden to display them. I had the privilege to visit Rodin's museum in Paris, which was also his house. And right behind me, you can see Le Penseur, which is the thinker, it's his most famous sculpture. And I happened to meet Ron Perlman in the garden while I was there. Auguste Rodin, 1940 to 1917, sculpted a universe of great passion and tragedy, a world of imagination that transcended the mundane reality of everyday existence. Although he was not educated at the École de Beaux Arts. Rodin focused on the human form and use of traditional materials such as marble, plaster, and clay to illustrate his desire to work within the system for commissions and exhibition opportunities. The hallmarks of his style, however, an affinity for the partial figure, a focus on formal qualities and relationships, and a desire to retain the marks of sculptural process on his finished works were revolutionary. Tomo Sushi Bar. Philadelphia has so many great food options and right now we are here at Tomo Sushi Bar and it's delicious. If you're vegan, this is a great place. Even if you're not vegan though, this is amazing. I highly recommend this place. It's super delicious. Tomo Sushi Bar is a sushi and ramen restaurant located in the heart of the old city, serving up traditional Japanese cuisine, specializing in vegan and vegetarian, with a modern touch. Tomo was created by two lifelong tomodachi, that means friends in Japanese, sushi chef Andy and ramen chef Steven. Working in the restaurant industry for more than 10 years, craftsmanship, artistry, and quality is what they aim to put on every plate. We just ate here and I had Naruto, vegan Naruto. I had spicy tuna 
vegan spicy tuna roll and I had a vegan ramen noodles and they were all delicious and I highly recommend this place. And we are at Alfred's Alley. This is the oldest street in the whole history of America. Alfred's Alley. 300 years of history in one residential street. As Philadelphia became a bustling city, artisans and merchants purchased or rented property close to the ports where goods and materials arrived. This led to overcrowding, and landowners recognized that tradesmen needed alternate routes to the river. Arthur Wells and John Gilbert opened a cart path between their properties which stretch from Front Street to Second Street. In 1703, the path became known as Alfred's Alley, named after Jeremiah Alfred, blacksmith and land developer. The heroic efforts of the resident and local historians from the 1930s to 1960s preserved the alley as a typical colonial street led by resident Dolly Adi. Adi fought to combat deterioration of the alley in the early 20th century and led efforts to form the Alfred's Alley Association. In the 1960s, the Alfred's Alley Association secured national historic landmark status to ensure the interstate construction did not eliminate Alfred's Alley from the landscape of Old City, Philadelphia. Today, Alfred's Alley is an exceptional example of early American structures built between 1720 and 1830, according to the historic marker designated in 2016. Penn Museum The Penn Museum is situated on Lena Peho King, the ancestral and spiritual homeland of the Yunami Lenape. Home to over a million extraordinary artifacts and archaeological finds from Africa, Asia, the Americas, and the Mediterranean, the Penn Museum has been uncovering our shared humanity across continents and millennia since 1887. Their journey as an institution began with an excavation of the ancient Mesopotamian city of Naipur, the first American excavation in the Middle East, and a groundbreaking undertaking in the history of archaeological research. Since that time, over 300 field excavations and anthropological research projects around the world have set the Penn Museum apart as an active research and educational institution. Today, 
Their mission is fulfilled by 22 curators, five teaching specialists, and over 150 affiliated consulting scholars. Their vast and varied collection of archaeological finds and ethnographic objects is organized in 11 sections documenting the peoples of Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas. The Sphinx at the Penn Museum. The Sphinx is 15 tons of solid granite, 7.5 feet tall, 13 feet long, and 4 feet wide. The Sphinx is the fourth largest Sphinx outside of Egypt. It is the only real sphinx in the Western Hemisphere. It was brought straight from Egypt, more specifically Memphis, the ancient capital. This sphinx was commissioned by Ramesses II for the Temple of Ptah in Memphis. The sphinx is nearly 3300 years old. The Sphinx was given to the museum for its archaeological sponsorships. The Sphinx arrived in Philadelphia in October 7 of 1913 on a boat. The Sphinx went from Memphis to Europe, specifically France, and then eventually made it to the Americas. It was cheaper to ship the Sphinx from Egypt to Philadelphia than to move it from the port where it landed in Pennsylvania to the museum. The Sphinx stayed outdoors for three years. The museum curators worried about the Sphinx getting weathered and it was moved indoors in 1916 and it cost $794.02. Finally, in June 12 of 2019, it was moved again to the main entrance hall. This time, it cost $850,000. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments which was your favorite place to visit in Philadelphia. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and activate the bell so YouTube can give me a million dollars. This was Burko TV. And of transmission.